Hello and welcome to Framework 5. Okay, uh, this one is going to be on the uh, general ledger accounts, right? Um, you know, to just give you some ideas to what it looks like and how to use them. Right? But uh, in order to use them, um, what we need to do is we need to uh, go back and revisit our journal. So if you haven't seen Framework 4, which was about the journals, um, go back and watch that to have a better idea as to what's going on in this particular um, video. So let me get the next slide here. All right, and get me a pen. All right, here we go. Um, so in the uh, previous framework on journals, uh, you recall that I showed you a two-column uh, ledger journal. Um, I had said, you know, it doesn't matter about the lines on the page. Different journals look, you know, I mean, the, it doesn't matter what the journals look like as long as they have the information in it. Um, I showed you how I could do a journal entry on a blank form. I showed you uh, one where it had additional columns, and I even had said, hey, you know, this is a general journal, but you could name it whatever you want, a cash receipt journal, cash disbursement journal, payroll journal, or whatever it is, because you're grouping like information together. So um, here um, I have another form uh, that I just happened to find this morning, and it, you know, and this one is labeled a cash receipts journal. Now, uh, these forms are coming out of our bookkeeping course, so, uh, you know, it's applicable, you know, if you haven't had a book, the bookkeeping course, you know, this is what you'll see in it. All right. But notice on this cash receipts journal, you know, this is a special journal because it has a special name, cash receipts, meaning anytime I want to, uh, anytime I'm going to receive cash, I'm going to use this, this journal. Um, notice that there's a page reference and I'm going to name this one page number one. But if this was split, no, oh, let's make it page 12. Um, I would write page 12 on there because I've had 12 pages of, of uh, receipts. Um, notice that I had said the date is important. So let's say the date happens to be 3-1. Okay. And if you recall from the other video, um, the other video had cash on the left and then it had general ledger accounts on the right. Okay. Um, this one is set up uh, very similar. Notice I have a blank column right here, right? And notice that I have cash over and short here, and I also have cash here, right? Well, instead of calling it the bank account, Bell National Bank, like I did in the previous video, you know, this is, you know, we're treating the cash account as a debit, okay? And on this side, you see receivables, sales, credit, uh, sales, and my sales taxes, credits, right? Um, these are the most commonly used columns. And remember, all I'm doing is just wanting to uh, enter in the information, make sure that I get all the information in. So this being a cash receipts journal, let's say um, someone makes a sale, okay? Um, and the account that I'm going to credit, I don't need that account because that sort of means your account's receivable. And since this is just a sale, a cash sale, all right, I might write in sale. And let's just say it's for $100. Well, I know I'm going to debit my cash for $100, okay? And to make things simple, I'm just going to keep it as um, I'm going to credit my sale for $100. Now, notice my debits equal my credits, right? Now, sure, I could have made this $106 um, uh, because I, well, let me go back and make it $106 because I'm not being too bright this morning, <laughs> okay? Um Let's say I sold something for 100 and I have 6% sales tax and I receive cash for it. So my the cash I'm going to receive is a debit for 106 and my sale is going to be 100 and my sales tax that I'm going to pay out is going to be $6. Okay? That's all the same information that's all the information that I need. I have my debits equal the total of my credits. I know I'm going to use the cash account, the sales account and the sales tax payable account. Okay? Um I know this is not a, this is supposed to be about ledger accounts, but I'm going to do just one more real quick. Let's say on 3-2, I make a sale to uh, someone buy something on account, on credit, um, and let's call it XYZ Company. So I'm going to write XYZ Company, and let's say the sale, again, was for, well, let's make it 200. So 
um, my cash I'm going to receive is 212 because my sale is 200 and I'm receiving $12. Oops, made a mistake there. Um, made a mistake. Sorry. My sale is for $212, but it's an accounts receivable. Okay. To XYZ account. Right. So my sale is going to be 200 and my sales tax is going to be 12. Now, I realize that you might not understand this or know all of this because let's face it, you know, I'm giving you a broad overview. You know, you should be reading the textbook. Some of this information you're going to know, some of it you're not going to know. So what you don't know, just take it on faith. And as you uh, progress in your, your studies, you'll learn this information. Right now, I'm just trying to give you a framework saying that, okay, when you have a transaction, it's going to be put into a journal. Okay. Now, I also had said that uh, the posting reference column was important. Right. Now, notice I didn't put anything in the posting reference column. Right. So basically, we're at where we were in the last video on journals. Well, now we have to take this information and move it over into our ledger accounts. So let's take a look at what a ledger account looks like. Okay. Um, this here is one of two basic ledger account forms. Okay. Um, on this form, what's important is uh, the account name, and I'm going to just fill it in as cash, and we're going to have an account number, and let's call it 100. Okay. Uh, the date is important. Right. The item the can and can't be filled out. Um, you know, you try to fill it out whenever you can. If not, don't worry about it. The posting reference column is important. The debit column is important. And the credit column is important. Now, this here balance, some forms will have this debit and credit column. Some will not. So if you, if it didn't, basically all you would see is to the left of this line, and you wouldn't see anything to the right. And you'd write the account number in here instead. Right? But having the balance column here um, helps you because you can keep a running balance of what's in that account. If you don't have the balance column, then what you'll have is just debits and you'll have credits, and then you'll have to total them up. Okay, right, so let's. Uh, this is a cash account, and I just set that up. Now let me uh, go and and do this next one and call this one um, uh, sales. Okay. And let's call that number that 500. All right, and. I realize I'm trying to keep, oh, actually I should go in and add another one. So let me go ahead and add another one. Just give me one second here and you'll watch me do this. I'm going to add a picture and da, 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 cash receipts journal trial runs ledger account. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. Insert. Hey, watch along with me. Like I said, this here is ad hoc. Okay. Um, I know this this information so well that I don't really think about it, and I don't really want to spend a lot of time uh, preparing professional slides and whatever have you when I, all I'm doing is just presenting information that's in the textbook anyway. All right, so um, let's let's label this one sales tax payable. And we're going to give that account, say, 212. Okay. All right. Now, the reason why I've done this is we have our cash receipts journal. I'm going to show you how I make this first entry here into our general ledger accounts. So we had a transaction. You know, we have the paperwork for it. I have a receipt where I uh, somebody purchased something from me. I made a sale for $100 and I collected $6 in tax, so I received $106 in cash. So once it's in the journal, what I want to do is post it to the ledger accounts. Right? Now you're going, you know, from your chart of accounts or your trial balance, you're going to have, you know, a listing of, you know, all of your general ledger accounts and you should have um, one of these here uh, ledger account forms for each and every one of those general ledger accounts so that when I'm up here in my uh, journal whenever I have a transaction I'm going to post this information into the respective ledger accounts all I'm really doing is just rearranging the information 
to group like information together. So let's say here I have, you know, I might have say 30 transactions, okay, in my journal. And in this case here, I've got a lot more because I'm on page 12, okay. Um, well, if I said to you, uh, what's my cash balance? I'd have to go back through 12 pages and everywhere I see cash, 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 I would have to, you know, add and subtract it all up. So when we post it into the respective ledger accounts, all we're doing is, is we're grouping that like information together. Okay. So that we we're only looking at that cash. And if we keep that running balance, then it's just a quick glance to see what the balance in that account is. Okay, so let's uh, just quickly post that entry. We know that's dated 3-1 and that I made a sale to cash, a sale, and I received cash of $106. Now remember, this is page 12 over here. Okay, so um, I'm going to come over to my cash account and on 3-1, all right, um, my posting reference is from the cash receipt journal, page 12. Okay. And I'm writing that in because I know that's where I'm getting the information from. And that was for a debit of $106. Okay. So my running balance is I had no balance before. So I'm going to have a balance of 106. Okay. In that cash account. All right. So that took care of, that took care of this portion of the, the, the journal entry. I still have, this portion I have to make for the sales and this portion I have to make for the sales tax. So I'm going to go to the sales account next and I'm going to input that information. So that's 3-1. My posting reference again is cash receipts journal page 12 and that sale was a credit of $100. Okay. And my running balance now is 100 on the credit side. Okay, so when I look at this account, if I want another balance, there it is. Okay, it's very important that you keep track and make sure that you're writing the right number and that you're writing it in the, the proper column, debit or credit. Okay, um, there's really no reason why your, your book should be out of balance, but it's a common thing. When you make an error, yeah, your books are going to be out of balance, and it could be for a variety of reasons. You wrote things in the wrong columns or, you, you know, you wrote the wrong numbers. All right, so over here on the sales tax payable, F31. My posting reference is CR12, uh, and that amount was uh, a credit of six dollars, and so my running balance is six. All right. Now notice that I had three three entries here: one for sales tax payable, one for sales, and they were both credits. There was a six dollar credit and a hundred dollar credit, so that's a credit of 106. And when I look at my cash account, that's a debit for 106. That's all the same exact information that I had used when I made this journal entry. Okay. The only thing that um, uh, I haven't done is I haven't filled in this posting reference. Okay. Um, and that's because if I was, I, I could treat this as one line item across the top. Okay. Um, and each one of these accounts, my uh, accounts receivable, I'm going to know uh, what account number that is. My sales was five, whatever, 500. My tax payable was 212 and my cash was what, 100, I believe, whatever I named it. But notice that I made it a one line item. I could have made the entry the same exact way, okay? Um, and said that I had um, $100 for my sales. I had um, on 3 1 six dollars for my sales tax payable and I had 106 for my cash now in this case here um, it since I'd have the three line items I would write in here that I had you know I posted it to count 500 212 and 100 showing that I posted it over into the, you know, the ledger accounts. Okay. Um, now I'm almost at 15 minutes and what I've done is I've kind of like merged the two together. But my main focus here is, is that this here's what my ledger accounts look like. Okay. 
Now I'm going to add in just some fictitious information to give you a little bit better idea as to how the ledger, to use the ledger account. So let's say on 3.2, um, I'm not going to worry about the posting reference right at the moment. Let's say I made a, another sale for 212. So now my uh, total balance would be 318. Okay. And let's say on 3.5, um, for some reason, um, I pay. I had, you know, I paid a bill, and let's say I paid out the bill eighteen dollars. Now notice that's a credit. Well, my balance now is going to be three hundred dollars, right? Why? Because I had a debit of three eighteen, and if I take a credit of eighteen, that leaves me with a balance of a debit of three hundred. Okay. I don't stick the eighteen dollars over here on the credit side. All, all that would be doing is just repeating what I have on the left. This here is a running balance. Okay. To further that idea, just a little quick, let's say on 3.7, um, I had to make a payment of, um, let's say, $350. Okay, so I have a credit of $350. Well, with my running balance, if I have a debit of $300 and I have a credit of $350, the difference is $50. And because it's, the credit is bigger than the debit, that means I have a balance of a credit of $50. So it would fill in on that side. Okay. Now, yeah, that means my account is overdrawn, but maybe I also knew that later that day, um, you know, I wrote a check for that, for that, and later that day I was going to also make a deposit of, say, um, $125. Okay. Well, that's a debit of $125. Right? So to fill in my balance, if I have a credit of $50 and a debit of $125, the difference is $75. And since my debit is larger, I'm going to put it on this the debit side. So now I have a balance of $75 as a debit in the cash account. And that's how you use your ledger accounts. Okay. Um, from here, um, I'm going to uh, move into uh, uh, the trial balances um, real quick. Now remember, we're following along that guideline way back in framework one where we had our journal entries, we posted them to our ledger accounts, and from our ledger accounts, you know, we're going to create our uh, uh, financial statements. So part of what you do with this ledger information is you create a trial balance and so let me do that in the next video. Okay.